This is the ultimate slow cooker Italian roasted pork sandwich. It serves a crowd, it can be sliced small, but the best part is this meat is made in a slow cooker so it just falls apart and melts in your mouth. Delicious. Let's make some. For these slow cooker Italian roasted pork sandwiches, let me tell you something. It's super easy because we're doing it all in a slow cooker. So we have a beautiful cut of a shoulder roast. You can use a butt roast of pork. And what that does is see all those areas and pockets of fat in there, they are gonna melt into nothing once they go into the slow cooker, slowly tenderize and just have so much flavor. And we wanna really make them a punch and an impact of that flavor. So we're gonna add some spices, we're gonna add some herbs, but what we're also gonna use is one of my favorite things here, and that's jardinera. I love jardinera. And that is just a mixture of kind of pickled vegetables. So you have cauliflower and peppers and carrots and it's all mixed together with garlic, some spices, some herbs, things like that. And it has this pickly brininess. Now, if you're thinking, why well, don't like pickles? In this case, the way they slow cook with everything else we're adding, they tenderize and add so much flavor and make this just fall apart. Pretty much pulled pork, but with different spices. And we're going to turn it into a sandwich that is just exploding with flavor. Melted cheese on top. We're going the whole way. But guess what? It's super simple, done in a slow cooker. That's what makes this wonderful. So to start, I have my spices, but I want to make sure... I grind up some. So this is fennel seed, and I really like fennel with pork, but it's the whole seed because that's what's easy to find. So I'm gonna put it right into a mortar and pestle, and this is what we're gonna to use to pound and crush it. So I'm just gonna take this and start crushing it like this and go down into a powder. It doesn't take long. You could even do it with a heavy cast iron skillet on a wood cutting board or any cutting board and just roughly kind of rough it up, and that will break down the fennel too. Instantly though, you're hit with this beautiful fragrant Fennel, I love fennel. So we're gonna pour it right into a bowl, but look how it's just kind of ground down now into a powder. Fennel and pork, they, they really are, they're best friends. <laughs> best friends for life. We all need one of those and it just works well together. So to that I wanna add some dried thyme, dried oregano and some black pepper. And the reason in this case I use dried, for this long slow cooker thyme, dried really just works best. And now we wanna add salt. It's kosher salt, it's what I always use. But the thing is here, salt is important because look at that big cut of meat we have. We want the salt to really begin to flavor it. So I'm mixing those together. It's just a beautiful aroma with those dried herbs and spices. And we're, you have to enjoy the process while you're cooking or while you're in the kitchen. And the smells, the sights, the sounds, it all works together. So we have our spice rub. Now we have a whole clove of garlic. Now I grow my own garlic, so it's hard net garlic, but you can use any type you have. What I'm gonna do is just go around and open it all up. So I'm gonna expose all the tops of those cloves and try to whack off that stem in the middle. And it's just exposing. Now I know some people in the past have always been scared of that green stem wanting to sprout out the middle. It tastes just like garlic. Don't let that make you feel bad or think you can't use it. It's fine. So I have that all sitting there and now we can just start putting this together. So we have our pork. I grew up with pork, because guess what? I live in Iowa. It's like pork country. So this is what I'm used to. Pork has such a great ability to just be able to take on so many flavors. So I'm putting the pork right in there, and then what I'm gonna do is sprinkle the salt and herby rub all over it. So since this is a slow cooker, I'm not gonna brine it first, because this is gonna have a long cook time where all this has a chance to really work in it. But what I am doing, as you can see, is sprinkling it all over, making sure it gets in all those crevices. We have a little bit of a fat cap over here. If it's too thick, you can always trim some of it off. This is actually pretty thin, so I'm just leaving it. And make sure you put it all in there. Now, if you think it's a lot of salt, it's a lot of meat. And you know what? When we cook at home, bake at home, eat at home homemade food, we take in so much less salt than if we're eating out or eating processed foods. This whole thing of garlic, I'm just gonna throw in like this. It's gonna season the brine, it's gonna season the juices underneath, and it's gonna become tender and soft, and that's the important part. We have here the secret ingredient for me, Worcestershire sauce. You know, what this does is it gives it such a depth of flavor. It gives it a little bit more saltiness, and it really adds this great undertone. So the last ingredient, is the secret, the jardinera. Now you can purchase it just in a jar. That's the best part. So I just poured it out. I'm gonna use it in a couple ways. We're gonna use it to not only cook with the pork in the slow cooker, add all that flavor, add a little bit of spice, all those notes. We're also gonna use it in the dressing we're gonna make after this roast and after we pull it apart to make a delicious sandwich that we're just gonna build on top of French bread. I'm a pickle person in general, so this to me is one of my favorite things. So we're gonna pour this over the top and this is just gonna just roast into it. So at this point, you just wanna roast it. Now, I am doing this the night before. 
So I'm just going to set it and then tomorrow we're going to convene so we have this. I think that's a great way to do it. You can also do it the morning of if you want to before you go to work or just sit with it all day and smell it. And we do remember one thing with a slow cooker and I think it's a lot of something people forget. You have low and high. All that means is low gets to the same temperature as high but low gets there slower, high gets there quicker. In the end, the temperature of a slow cooker is going to be the same. Now if you have a warming function or whatever, that's a little different. But low and high, same temperature in the end, just the speed at which they get there. I'm going to do it on high, it gets there quicker. It's going to roast, pull apart, we're going to make a delicious sandwich. So it's the next day, I made this last night, and it has been just roasting, now it's done. So it's sat here and I let it cool off just a little bit here so we can shred it in a minute. What I'm doing right now is slicing a beautiful loaf of French bread. I did home make this, you don't have to. You can buy whatever French bread, you know, most supermarkets anymore will have some style of a country French bread, kind of an American style French bread. It's super simple and it's what's great with these sandwiches. Now this obviously is gonna feed a few people, a crowd, whether it's like for a big game day, whether it's just for a family meal with a few people, it's gonna work really well. So what I have here is my bread cut open and I just wanna give it a nice light toast. So we're gonna drizzle it with some olive oil. This is gonna help it flavor, gonna get a little bit crusty in the oven. The thing is these breads are soft and so we're putting heavy ingredients on them. I want them to get a little bit of a crispness to them, you know what I mean? And that's why we're putting some oil on them and seasoning them, just a little bit of salt and pepper. Now think of this almost as a big version of a crostini. If you don't know what a crostini is, it's just slices of bread with olive oil, maybe some salt and pepper. So I'm gonna pop this in the oven, let it dry out, but what we can do is shred our meat, get our greens ready while it's going, so there's a lot we can do. So while that bread is toasting slightly, we can take this beautiful meat and look how it just, it's falling apart as I try to even get it out. That's the beautiful part of letting it slowly tenderize and just roast in a slow cooker. Now on the side here, we had a little bit of a fat cap, but guess what? Now that it has just sat there, this just scrapes right off. Isn't that beautiful? So I just wanna shred it and look at this. Look what's happening. It, it's, I don't even need to shred it. It just literally is falling apart. And that's what's just the beautiful part of this is it now has all those flavors of that jardinero we added, of the spices and herbs we added. And yes, guys, you are totally allowed. <laughs> Mm, that was good. So much flavor, so much just delicious juices coming out of that. But look, I'm not even, I'm really not even shredding it. I'm like smashing it along. And that's the beautiful part of this. Look at all that. That is a beautiful thing. Do you remember we put that whole clove of garlic in here or whole head of garlic, I should say. Look at that. Look how soft and supple they are. I'm just squeezing them out onto this. We're not gonna throw that out. That still has tons of flavor. We're gonna put it right into this. So what I wanna do now is with all this meat, is I'm just gonna put it right back into that beautiful meat liquor that's down in there. It's like all these juices from the meat and it's some of that jardinera is still in there. And I just want it to sit and kind of just soak in that and marinate in that. So once we get all this put in here, I'm just gonna discard any of that fat that I took off. We can now just put together a quick green, dressed greens that we're gonna put on top of this sandwich that will give it a nice little bite. Since this is such a simple recipe, each component can make a difference. That's why we're going to, instead of just putting lettuce or greens on top, we're gonna dress them in a really quick vinaigrette that has just as much flavor impact as that meat. But that to me is really important. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a few things here. So some of the same things we used in the meat, we're gonna do a little bit of oregano, a little bit of red chili flake, not a lot. Think of this as like a really quick, very quick, Italian dressing. Not like a true one necessarily, but just like a nice really quick one. A little bit of dried thyme. So we have dried chili flakes, some dried oregano, a little bit of dried thyme. We're gonna have a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, good seasoning here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in, we have some more jardinera, that brine. Yeah, we're gonna use that as our acid here for some greens. Like that to me is such a beautiful way to dress something and has so much flavor in it already. We're gonna do some olive oil, which will have that richness and really cut through the acidity of the brine. That's what's, you're just doing a play of different things here. It's a really simple dressing. We're not trying to even emulsify it. There's no mustard. There's nothing other than those components. So you can see this really comes together pretty quickly. It almost does emulsify on its own. Beautiful and simple. So we have some fresh greens. You can do whatever mix you like. Arugula is really good on this with a little bit of pepperiness or just some nice leafy greens. 
it really isn't important. You just want the crunch and that freshness. We're gonna just quickly dress them and see this is a great way to make sure instead of just pouring dressing on, which I don't wanna do, we want just enough here to cover these greens, to dress them, to let them sit. And guess what? It's a great time too, just to check your work. Just grab. I'm shredding some cheese because we're ready now to make this beautiful sandwich. So you can see we toasted this just enough under a light broiler to get it nice and brown. Do you hear that? A little bit of crustiness to it. That to me is what's important here. And now we can kind of just start making our sandwich. I think it's important to melt the cheese. So what I like to start with is getting some good doses of meat. This is where you can kind of just build it and make it, you know, the perfect thing because that's what you want here is just We've been now marinating this meat again in that cooking liquid, which it just soaks it in. You can see right there that that meat just has all that flavor. You could of course also make this single serve, do it on smaller buns or rolls of some type if you want to. I think there's something though special about doing it this way where you can actually dress it up and kind of make a bigger presentation out of it, especially if you're having some special occasion, you're having people over for, make it special. That's what this is. So once you have the meat on there, we're gonna put cheese. Now, I like to do a fontina or something that really just melts well. You know, you could do other ones too, like a mozzarella. You could do a lot of different things, but I think the fontina, what I like is, has just a slight edge to it, just a little bit of flavor. Melts really, really well with this, which is what I like. And I also am gonna put some over here on this toasted sliced one that we're then gonna put on top after it's all done. I think that's just super essential. And notice, I always like to shred my own cheese. Pre-shredded cheeses, they have like cellulose in them and they have weird things that I just don't think they melt the best. But what does is if you just shred your own cheese, that to me will always give you those good results. So make sure to spread it out. It won't take long. I mean, I'm saying one to two minutes maybe under a broiler to get this melty, put their additional things on and we're gonna enjoy it. It doesn't take long to get the melty cheese, and believe me, you want the melty cheese. But then we just build it on top of that. So we need those dressed greens, and believe me. I know I'm saying believe me a lot, but that's because sometimes it's unbelievable. The dressed greens make a huge difference. And having them pre-done like this, and you putting them on top, it's like taking a sandwich from like decent to just like, oh, that's amazing. Now, this is where you can kind of take it your own way. Pepperoncini, sliced those wonderful little like yellow peppers, that to me is a classic on this. But you know what, maybe you want something else. I think it's also really good, instead of just pepperoncini, to do some more jardinera. So if you want to, you can put some of this on top, which I think is really delicious too. It's more of a, you know, that brininess, it has a little bit of spice depending what brands or what kinds you find, but it also just kind of adds that more fresh jardinera as opposed to right in that meat. So it's really whatever you choose, but just know, there's no wrong decisions here. I mean, look at that sandwich. Obviously it serves more than one. Or like I said, you can make individual ones. It's really whatever works for you. That's the beautiful thing here. Kind of smash it together a little bit to marry all that. And then we're just gonna slice it up. This is now, to me, how you can see that this really becomes something that a crowd can really take a hold of and go with. And that's the best part, is make these slices you know, look at this. This is much more of a serving size now once you actually get it sliced through. Look at that beautiful sandwich. Look at that. Look at all that meat. The cheese that's melted. I do have a plate. It's gonna be messy either way, but you just have to go in. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's delicious. That is like absolutely delicious. And as you can see, the steps weren't bad. They were totally worth each one. Cooking that meat in the slow cooker, making it just tender and fall apart and melts in your mouth. Those flavor components of the brightness of those greens on top really cut through that meat that's kind of rich. The bread is light, it's airy, it's the perfect carrier for all these flavors. And then these little bites of brininess on top from the pepperoncini or from jarnera itself. Mm, it's a match made in heaven. What do I hope you do with this? I hope you have something coming up that you have a reason to make a delicious sandwich for, because that's what this is. Absolutely delicious. Enjoy it, share it around, because the point of these videos is for you to be excited, but for others to get excited too. So share these videos. And as always, check my website, wiseguide.com, for this recipe and all my other recipes. They're all on there.